Hello everyone. In this video, we will be looking at JavaScript. So we'll be starting with the JavaScript. And this video is helpful for the students who are preparing for the PGT examination because JavaScript comes in the PGT examination. As well as if you are preparing for UGC net examination, again, this video will be very helpful for you because in the UGC net examination, JavaScript is in the syllabus. So I decided that instead of creating two separate videos for UGC net and PGT examination, because bo in both places, the level of the questions that will come in the JavaScript will be exactly the same. So what I decided is I am going to create this video session where I'm going to cover the JavaScript in the decent depth, which is required. Okay. Now, uh, we'll start with the JavaScript here and the JavaScript that we'll be discussing is from the history and the basics and the main aim here will be to solve the examination questions. Okay, so the main focus is to focus for the examination. I'm not discussing the practical implementations here. In most of the cases, wherever it is required, I'm going to discuss the practical implementation. But main aim here is to go for the examination and we have to solve the question in the actual examination hall. So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking some uh, screenshots of the questions whenever it is required. And at the same time, I'll also take, uh, you know, the concept explanations and some con basic information that you have to write. So uh, in every every place, wherever we get some in, in important terminologies or which might be important for the examination, I'm going to say, say you that this is important. You can write it down on your notebook. Everything else you don't need to write. And secondly, you can also download a PDF copy of this video. You can go to the download section on our website, which is www.digmento.com. And over there, if you go to the download section, you can find a PDF copy of this presentation that I'm using here, as well as you can also check out the courses that is available. So this is only for the students who are not registered. If you are watching the video on YouTube and secondly, for the registered students, obviously you are going to get the complete course here. Only some of the first 10 or 20% of the videos will be on the YouTube. So if you will get the complete course here and your complete course will be available on our website that is LMS learning management system and the complete course will also be available with you on the Google Drive. So let us start with the very first introduction of JavaScript and what exactly is the JavaScript? Why do we need it? And uh, some basic introduction regarding the JavaScript. Again, we are going to study everything in the details which is required. And we'll start with the basic introduction of the JavaScript as a programming language. Now, there are three things. Number one is if you are studying web development, in the web development, you are going to study HTML. Now we have HTML5 also. Second is you need JavaScript, which is also called as JS. And third is you need CSS, which is cascading style sheet. So with the help of these three things, you will be able to create beautiful web pages, very beautiful pages uh, to design websites. So you need HTML, you need CSS, as well as you need the JavaScript. And secondly, in the web pages, uh, so we don't, uh, in web pages are not only the place where JavaScript can be used. So many desktop and the server programs also use the JavaScript. Even for example, Node.js is a very b uh, well known or best example of the JavaScript. So Node.js is uh, created with the help of JavaScript and some other programming language also. And some databases like MangoDB and CouchDB also use JavaScript as their programming language. So it is just not the only the case that you are going to see the JavaScript in the web browsers. A part of this, you can see the JavaScript on various places. Now, what exactly is JavaScript? So JavaScript was initially created to make web pages alive. That means they want to make some, you want to make some interesting web pages, which are interactive, which where you might want to show some kind of animations. So for that purposes, we created JavaScript. Okay. So the programs in this language are called as script because they can be written right in the HTML and execute automatically on the page load as the page loads. So scripts, uh, what exactly the script and why is it is not a separate programming language. See, in most of the programming language, those languages are completely independent, right? So they do not need a carrier in the same way here. You can see this JavaScript need a carrier. I mean, on a different kind of scripting language or on different kind of tab tagging language or, or on any other different kind of program programming language. So JavaScript will write. So it needs a carrier. Okay. So uh, scripts are provided and executed on a, as a plain text and they don't need a special preparation or a compilation to run. 
In this aspect, JavaScript is very different from other programming language called as Java. See, Java is a very different programming language and JavaScript is a very different programming language. Now, actually JavaScript is a scripting language so much, uh, where we can write programs. And now, never confuse that JavaScript and Java and both are same because JavaScript is not derived from Java, but rather this JavaScript used the name Java because Java was popular at that point of time when JavaScript was created. So what is a JavaScript? So JavaScript is a dynamic computer programming language. And what do you mean by this dynamic? Why we have written the word dynamic? Because dynamic uh, programming language in computer science is a class of high level programming language which at runtime execute many common programming behaviors that static programming language perform during compilation. What do you mean by this is generally when you see the C and C++ programming language, so when you execute this programming language, these programming language directly generate a code which itself is the machine code or machine executable code. So we have in the C and C++ we have various stages in the compilation process. So in C and C++ in compilation you are going to get lexicon analyzer, you are going to get syntax analyzer, you are going to get semantic analyzer. Then you have intermediate code generator and further in end you are going to get in the compilation process as the uh, address code or uh, you can say uh, we are going to get something called as machine code. I mean after the entire compilation process we are going to get the machine code here the compiler is going to return assembly code which is this we are going to give that assembly code to the operating system and further the operating system is going to give you a machine code now the same thing does not happen with the javascript so javascript is a dynamic computer programming language that means it gives the code that uh, we currently the code that we have it translates the code to some other kind of uh, form some other form so that might be for example a byte code that might be some kind of expression tree and so some something else right so here in the statically compiled languages the these languages directly gives you a machine code which you can further execute but here in this dynamic uh, languages generally all uh, the there can be changes in uh, during execution of the language let me show you with the example i'll show you explain you with an example so why the name javascript here so when javascript was created it was initially had another name it was initially called as live script it the name was not javascript but when in 1995 they created the javascript the name java was becoming very popular because java programming language was getting popular day by day so because of the popularity of java they tried to see that if we can uh, make our programming language more popular by adding the num num name java so instead of live script they made it as a javascript so that they can use the popularity of java to make it more you know uh, popular so it was a fully independent language it was not at all related to the java programming language it is a fully a different independent language which has no relation with java at all now what is javascript so javascript is a lightweight and most commonly used as a web part of web pages whose implementation allows the client side script to interact with the user and make dynamic pages so it helps to make dynamic pages according to the interaction with the client and it is an interpreted programming language with object oriented capabilities and what exactly is this interpreted programming language now why what is interpreted job programming language let us just have a look at it so we have two kinds of uh, programming language one is the compiled programming language and second one is the interpreted com programming language so here the difference is not in the language it is in the implementation how these uh, languages are implemented so in the compiled implementation the original program is translated to call as something called as machine instruction so original program itself is translated to machine instruction but in case of interpreted programming language the original program is translated to something else i mean it is not directly the original program is not directly going to be translated to a machine instruction but rather it is translated to something else for example uh, in um, python ruby smalltalk they are going to translate to something called as byte code as done in lua okay and a tree like representation of original programs such as abstract syntax tree is done by many prototype or educational interpreter so interpreters does not going to uh, translate the entire program to a machine language but rather the interpreters are going to translate the program into something else which might not be a machine instruction now the javascript uh, was basically created 
uh, I mean, uh, it was first used by Netscape because it, Netscape changed the name of the Java of this live script to JavaScript because of the excitement of the Java. And this JavaScript made its first appearance in Netscape 2.0 as a web browser in 1995 with the name LiveScript. The general purpose core of uh, the core of the language has been embedded in the Netscape Internet Explorer and the other web browsers. So many web browsers uses uh, the JavaScript and they use with the help of some called as execution engine. So we'll see what is that execution engine later on and what is the name of different execution engines for JavaScript. Now this JavaScript is a lightweight, as I said, interpreted programming language designed for creating network centric, centric applications, which is complementary to and integrated, integrated with Java. So it is a complementary to Java and it is also integrated with HTML and it is both open cross open as well as cross platform programming language. Now what is the difference between open and the cross platform programming language? As you can see here, the cross platform refers to the capability of a software that it can run off on different hardwares as well as on different platforms, whether it is Apple platform, whether it is Android, whether it is a Windows platform or any kind of different platform as well as any kind of different kind of hardware. It can be a tablet, it can be a mobile phone, it can be a computer, it can be a laptop or anything, anywhere the JavaScript can run. So that is why it is called as a cross platform application or you can say cross, cross platform programming language. And when I say saying an open platform, see open platform does not mean that it is open source. Open platform means that the, all the documentations and everything that is available openly to everyone and the people can add their own functionalities, they add their own features as uh, functions on the programming language so that they can modify it to create it more powerful according to their requirement. But does not mean that it is open source. Now we have JavaScript that JavaScript can also run on the server side as well as JavaScript can also run on the client side. The mostly uh, famous side is the client side. I mean, in most of the cases we are going to run the JavaScript on the client side. And this is the most common form of the language and the script should be included in or referenced by HTML document for the code to be interpreted by the browser. So we generally include this JavaScript inside an HTML document and the web browser interpret the JavaScript code. It means that a web page need not be static HTML, but can be included, include the program that interact with the user, control the browser and dynamically create HTML content. So generally it is used to create dynamic HTML content. Sometimes you want to show some notifications to the user. Sometimes you want to show some uh, dynamic content to the user that might be according to, let us say you want to show the name of the user who is executing the web page. So it is uh, generally, it generally runs on the client side and uh, you have the various versions of JavaScript that can run in the server side as well as the JavaScript can also run in the client side. Okay. Now here, so JavaScript client side, me uh, side mechanism provides many advantages over the traditional CGI scripts. For example, you might use the JavaScript to check if the user has entered a valid email address in the form. For example, the user might be able, might be creating uh, entering some information in a web form. In the web form, instead of writing a mobile phone, phone number, he might have written his name or instead of writing, giving a 10 digit mobile phone number, he might have given nine digits. So you might be you might want to show some alert box or some notification to the user that this information that you have entered is not at all correct. So for that purposes, you can use JavaScript. And this JavaScript code is executed when the user submit the form and only if the entries are valid, they will be submitted to the web page. So if the you, whatever information is entered by the user in the web form is correct, then only the web page is going to get submitted. Now this JavaScript can be used to trap user initiated events such as button clicks, navigations and other actions which the user might want to take. So it is more like you are interacting with the user. So whatever the inf work the user is going to do, user might want to click on something. It might want to, user might want to submit on something. So whenever the user is going to perform some action on that event, you are going to again perform some action for JavaScript. And that is why that is how you make it interactive with the user. So let us meet you in the next video where I'm going to discuss more about the JavaScript engine and the softwares where you can execute the JavaScript.